Hi folks, I'll be leaving the end of the month to go to Peru to investigate Machu Picchu. Before I leave, however, I want to share some new information and some practical survival advice for you. You people have heard me talk about the Suspicious Observers channel a lot, and they're doing important work in predicting natural disasters like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. I was watching one of their conference videos the other day and I noticed a pattern in the data they presented that matched a pattern I saw in nature. I'm going to show you the pattern that I saw but I want to talk about the weather a little bit first. Let's go all the way back to the video where I showed the perfectly circular vortex over the eastern US and predicted that Hurricane Florence would strike the Carolinas right at the center of the circle at the magnetic anomaly that uh, is at that area. What I failed to do because I was focused on the vortex and magnetic anomaly at the coast was consider the larger vortex a little further north in the Atlantic. Here's a magnetic anomaly map of the uh, Atlantic seafloor and you can see the mid-Atlantic ridge uh, going up the middle and a magnetic anomaly uh, at near the top of that and that I think is where the other vortex was centered in the Atlantic Ocean. As you can see from this map that's the area where uh, Tropical Storm Leslie formed and she's been just wandering around out there in that area now for a couple of weeks and according to the forecasts I've seen uh, Leslie could sit there for a couple of more weeks. This makes sense logically if the magnetic anomaly is holding it in a certain area and there's no land around it to break the storm up. Now let's take another look at these uh, twin vortexes. Uh, this is a smaller pair somewhere I don't remember. Now as you can see from this picture there are clearly vortexes involved with these twin hole punch cloud systems. In a previous video I showed a video clip of two plasma rings in the sky and there was a plasma orb traveling around the ring on the right and every time it got to the point closest to the ring on the left there was a flash of light and another plasma ball would uh, form on the right hand ring. So that tells me that there's a transfer of energy between the two rings which would make sense from a Birkeland current perspective because there are two currents, a positive and negative, inside of the magnetic uh, tube. I guess what I'm saying here is that the Leslie storm might be feeding the other storms in the area. And that conclusion is supported by uh, the great red spot on Jupiter, which is a huge storm or a group of storms. Now let's go back to the disaster prediction data. If you look at the starting date for this cluster of sunspot data, you'll notice that it starts on the uh, winter solstice around December 21st or December 22nd. Now if you go to the other end of the chart, you'll see that the spring equinox falls right in the uh, area of their six week low period. Now in my opinion there aren't any coincidences in reality and what this actually represents is the end of a natural cycle that proceeds from the spring equinox to the next spring equinox. Just like all cycles of life in nature do. This local storm report chart for tornadoes in the US shows a similar cycle. You can see it starts in the spring equinox and then builds up to the end of the year. But you don't see the decline part. You just see all it clumped together at the beginning of the chart. You would see the cycle clearer on this graph if it was charted from spring until the next spring. This data shows a similar decline from the winter solstice to the spring equinox. Notice in this graph that the CME was centered on the winter solstice and that was right in the 10 week local minimum period. Now in this picture notice that the long term precursor for the data 
was an extreme number of sunspots on the spring equinox. And notice the growth in the chart, just like the natural growth cycle of nature during that period. Now notice in this slide that both the long-term precursors and the short-term precursors both occur on March 21st, the equinox again. I've only presented minimal evidence for a natural yearly cycle in our cosmology, but I believe I've presented enough evidence to warrant a deeper investigation of the cycle and the need for examining the cycle from spring to spring instead of winter to winter. I believe the ancients used astrology for a lot more than just timing the planting of their crops. Their knowledge of symbology and the synchronicities between heaven and earth is what guided their daily life. This is the astrology chart for October 6th when Venus goes retrograde. Venus symbolizes what we value in life. Notice that Venus is in the sign of Scorpio, the symbol of death and destruction and resurrection. Now consider how much death and destruction and monetary loss we've taken from all these severe storms. Last but not least, notice that Venus is retrograde and it's going to go back through Scorpio again. Here's the best symbol I could find for retrograde. It's interesting that the snake is so prevalent in our symbology of today and the past. This is a great serpent mound in southeastern Ohio. I had a farm in southeastern Ohio and I was born right across the river in Kentucky. Notice that the great serpent mound is associated with the solstices and the equinoxes. Notice from this slide how important the Amazon is to our world's climate. But look what we're doing to it. All for greed and luxury and comfort. These people have no idea of the damage they're doing. The desertification of the planet is the source of a lot of dust that increases our plasma problems. This is not the lifestyle or civilization that I want to live in. Capitalism is self-destructing because it's unsustainable. You can't have infinite growth on a finite planet. Getting back to South America now, you can see that the whole continent is pretty much uh, neutral and with only a few hot spots that are more uh, magnetically polar. And those hot spots tend to be occupied by megalithic sites like Machu Picchu. And this is what Machu Picchu's magnetic anomaly looks like. Now look at the location of a new uh, megalithic site that's been found in the Amazon and compare that location to the magnetic anomaly map. This megalithic site looks amazingly like Stonehenge in Europe, but there are much older sites that are completely buried. I don't fit into modern society and I never have, but I resonate with these people right here. They live a natural, non-materialistic lifestyle that's close to the earth, and that's what I want. These people are simple and practical and they have many skills. And I can share my knowledge with them in practical ways. It's a perfect match. I keep thinking about this man here. I understand how he feels now and why he refused to share his knowledge with the world. Look what we did with nuclear power. I don't think the world is ready for plasma technology yet. And I doubt we will be until we give up the greed just as simple as that. Before I end this video, I'd like to make a suggestion. There's going to be a lot of people getting insurance settlement checks from the storm damage, and I would suggest that you look at it as an opportunity to move and relocate to a safer location. Keeping in mind that we're heading back into an ice age and things may progress much faster than we think. Take care, folks, and good luck, and I really wish you the best, and I hope I meet some of you in South America somewhere.